Hey, I'm Spoonie Chad, and this is Heavily Modded KSP-1, and I've been trying to beat it using only aircraft. And today I'm going to try to build our very first single stage to orbit space plane, or SSTO, of the series, and push it to its absolute limits, reaching speeds of over Mach 9, but not without a few battles with the Kraken first. First up, I'm going to go ahead and upgrade our runway, because 18 tons isn't going to cut it from here out, and also, we just have the money to do it. From there, I go directly into the space plane hangar and begin work on our SSTO. We're going to have to use a bunch of those small tanks to do this, and we need a lot of oxidizer too. Not as much liquid fuel though, because those Weasleys are very efficient. You may have noticed I closed off the back note on that engine to make things more aerodynamic, and you might want to make a mental note of where I placed this wing part for later in the video, because it didn't work out so well for me. What did work out though was that big delta wing design. We needed a lot of lift to get all of that rocket fuel off the ground, which is initially dead weight until you activate the rocket engine. We put our elevators and ailerons on the back there, and I'm setting them up to deploy in opposite directions whenever we activate the brakes, and that's going to act as air brakes so we can bleed off speed a lot easier uh, without having to do S-turns or anything weird like that. We put our now kind of shrimpy looking landing gear on there, and then repaint everything. You also may have noticed I added some uh, nice little uh, canards on the front there that are going to help us with uh, pitching this thing up and down, and I'm really hoping that it's not going to mess up our re-entries or anything and cause this thing to completely spin out of control like a lot of my KSP-2 planes with giant canards on the front. But the uh, takeoff roll on that was was absolutely amazing, uh, no complaints there. I gave some initial angle attack on those wings that really helped with that. It's going to help us maintain altitude and hopefully climb more efficiently. Which is the way to do with any KSP plane because the uh, wing parts have the uh, aerodynamic qualities of a pizza box and don't give you any lift unless you angle them a little bit. And here we're just climbing up to see how high I can get before I need to light the rocket engine and a time warp. And when a time warp the wings become more of a cape than they do wings. Um, and that's all to do with where I put that first wing part that I told you to remember. I put it on the front of the fuselage and then moved it back to where the wings are now. That means that the wings think they're attached at one point far ahead of where they actually are, so they're just hinging there. Still fairly low in the atmosphere, I activated the swivel engine because we started losing speed pretty rapidly. Those Weasley engines don't do very good at high altitudes. Here I pulled up the drag and lift lines, and those red ones right there are the drag lines, and you may notice that we barely have any of them, so this thing is pretty aerodynamic as far as uh, space planes go, especially early career ones. And here I was still holding a pretty high angle of attack because uh, this thing was so heavy that the swivel engine was having a lot of trouble uh, pushing it along and holding the angle of, uh, the angle that we wanted to take into orbit, which was around 10 degrees. So I had to give it a pretty high angle of attack, which caused some drag losses. Um, and I was so focused on that, actually, that uh, I ended up completely overshooting 70 kilometers and going straight 90 to 100 kilometers, well over 100 kilometers in the end for our apoapsis, uh, which is fine and all, but it's not going to give us a perfect estimate of how much delta V this thing has in a perfectly circular 70 kilometer low curb in orbit. Uh, but we're still going to get a pretty good idea of how much delta V this has, which is 504 meters per second left over with this uh, very eccentric kind of orbit. Well, not very, a little bit eccentric kind of orbit here that we have going on. And of course, I'm going to do some science while we're up here. Even though we already have some space science, there's still a little bit to be gained because uh, science experiments in KSB-1... Uh, you'll, you'll do some science in an area and then you can come back, especially with stuff like the Mystery Goo, and get a little bit more science from it. Um, and also, I think it showcases the progression between KSP2 and KSP1. The fact that I just, in episode 3 here, after uh, two 20-minute uh, episodes, in episode 3 we're finally getting to orbit. So it feels good to finally be getting to orbit. I think it was literally episode 1 for the KSP2 aircraft only series that we got to orbit. So it's a pretty big difference here. Uh, here we're going to try to land at the KSC, and we ended up overshooting it, and of course our overshoot location is the wonderful Sandy Island that we discovered in the last episode. And while I was playing this, I was very, very sketched out and worried about the re-entry, because this thing was completely untested in re-entry. And it uh, turns out that my uh, worries might have been pretty founded, because look what happened to the wings! And Jeb, of course, passed out because he took 32 Gs! But, you know, it's Jebediah Kerman, so he can pull 32 Gs and wake up in like 10 seconds. That's no problem. And then fly your plane in for a perfect landing, hopefully. Uh, the, the wings were a big, big, 
big issue with this whole re-entry and the the ascent and everything they really need to be fixed i mean look at that they, they literally they're turning more into insect wings this thing looks like a wasp trying to sting someone as it's trying to come in for a landing here and i'm not being like jumpy on the controls it's very fine movements with my flight stick it's just catching the air and uh over correcting itself almost but we come in for a sketchy sketchy landing you can just see the back end wiggling around and the wings trying to act like a cape again um and uh yeah it came in came out as a pretty rough landing not 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 the roughest landing ever but a pretty rough landing and it was very late down the runway so we had to go full thrust reversers and ended up tipping over uh so yeah it wasn't a perfect flight to orbit but these things happen this is the very first iteration and we did get a bit of science out of it and got a lot of our money back for the parts and jeb got some xp out of it that is always good the more jeb levels up the more controls we have um and we of course we got our missions we're going to go ahead and recolor those weasley engines because the color was actually off on those and of course that took priority over top of fixing these wings somehow uh, we're going to fix the wings though now and place them where they set on the plane and you may notice right here that i do actually have rcs build aid now and it is helpful i, I denied getting that mod for a very long time just to do it the old school way but we go over to mission control and we scroll down and we're greeted with this reach Mach 4 and i'm like Heck yeah, immediately, let's go to Mach 4. We also go ahead and grab a mission to uh, test the Panther engines, which we don't actually have yet. So that'll allow us to unlock the Panther engines later on. But I think this thing can get to Mach 4 just the way it is with no issue whatsoever. I mean, we, we literally reach orbit and that's like Mach 6.7 or something like that. So here it is on takeoff, and it, you can already tell that the wings are a lot more stable. We go ahead and test it in time warp, which is what was majorly causing the wings to warp a lot and yeah basically no warping going on i mean it's not as steady as what it'll be whenever we get auto strut and stuff unlocked but hey, it's absolutely fine and usable and i wouldn't really need auto strut on it to be honest uh, we got up to a, a pretty decent speed the ascent was a lot more efficient this time uh, even though we weren't actually going to orbit uh, you live you learn and i'm still climbing so high here not because we're trying to make it to space but because i really need to get to a thinner part of the atmosphere look at jeb just hanging out there in the cockpit uh i really need to get to a thinner part of the atmosphere to uh, reduce drag on the craft and make this uh, mach 4 possible which it'd be possible lower in the atmosphere but i really don't want to burn up so we go up here to around uh, 12,000 meters above the surface of Kerbin, and we just begin flattening out uh, leveling out and trying to uh, reduce our vertical speed as much as possible because that is one of the requirements here you can see the requirements on the right side there uh, blew up the uh, contract requirements we need to be under 15 meters per second of vertical speed to be able to get this much like the prior mock uh, one and two uh, contracts and everything like that so here we're getting pretty close to the required 1372 meters per second we get everything we just need to hold it for a few seconds and i did and we completed it the last part of the contract is to bring it in for a landing without breaking anything look how much plasma was built up around this thing i mean 12,000 meters is a pretty low altitude to be going 1300 1400 meters per second um so here we're going to fly over to sandy island naturally the perfect location for doing these runs because you're launching toward it already whenever you're leaving the uh, ksc runway so it's perfect to uh, just land there rather than going all the way back because i do like landing every single one of these at a runway and trying my best not until land crash landed in the ocean or something like that we came in really really hot here at the runway so i did a bit of an s turn and used the air brakes to slow us down and of course line up for a nice low approach and hopefully very slow i actually get the vertical speed under one meter per second before we touch down and we end up touching down with complete butter that was the smoothest landing yet in the series the camera and the bouncy landing gear maybe made it look pretty bad but it was under two g's of force and uh it was it was under one meter per second or right at one meter per second back at the ksc it's a foggy day and i immediately head over to mission control where we have a contract to achieve mach 9 literal dark star hypersonic speeds the only issue here is the orbital velocity on earth is around like mach 22 but on Kerbin, it's more close to around Mach 6.7, so Mach 9 means we'll be in a very high orbit around Kerbin. But we're going to accept it anyway, uh, and go to making some modifications to our SSTO. 
Um, the first thing we're going to do is take off the Weasley engines and go get some Panther ones. Now, we haven't unlocked the science node for these. We solely have these because of accepting that contract earlier to test them. But we're going to cheese the company that makes them and just use them anyway without ever doing the contract that they hired us for. And that is until, you know, it gets close to running out and then we'll quickly do it. So here we are launching at the KSC, and this thing is picking up speed a lot faster with those Panther engines. They're much more efficient at the higher uh, end transonic speeds than the Weasleys are, and that's just in the regular dry mode. Uh, once we start losing speed in the normal, more efficient dry mode, and we've climbed as high as we possibly can get in the normal mode, we're going to go ahead and activate the afterburners. The Panther engines have some very, very nice afterburners in them. In the afterburner mode, they're probably like the third best jet engine overall for making SSTOs. You can get some crazy speeds out of these engines. We were able to get over 800 meters per second, 850 meters per second to be exact, before we started running out of speed and activated the swivel engine. So this is going to be a great help to getting us up to Mach 9 because we've already got a huge boost before we even start tapping into the uh, Delta V that our swivel engine has stored back for us. So uh, this is going to be a pretty slow process though because we're going to burn our entire tank of fuel pretty much and uh, our thrust to weight ratio isn't anything crazy and our burn time is fairly long so uh, I had to speed a lot of this up quite a bit because I wasn't wanting to use a time warp on this because I mean I'm going hypersonic speeds uh, you don't want to mess with time warp when you're going hypersonic, I feel like. Uh, so, around, like, right after we, uh, activated our swivel engine, our panther engines cut completely out, and we've been just relying on the swivel engine. Here we actually officially rest orbit, I would say, because we went into the orbital cam, and we're actually raising our apoapsis really, really quickly while we're just here burning in the atmosphere. Uh, we are up to 2600, 2700, and climbing meters per second, and now we reach... 3,000 meters per second. The target goal, Mach 9, but our vertical speed is still above the required 150 meters per second, and it's actually kind of rising. So I try to fight it. I use a little bit of fuel, and I, I turn this thing nose down in the upper atmosphere up here, but there's just not enough aerodynamic pressure to push our vertical speed down, and we are going into orbit. So I went back a quick save to right before all of this happened and tried to save my fuel this time and just continued on and completely tried to forget about getting the Mach 9 mission on this pass at least. So we're going to go out to the end of our orbit, which look how high our orbit is. And we're just going to go ahead and get some high orbit science because this is a different biome than low, uh, low carbon orbit and we're just going to go ahead and get some science there and then come back in and since we're in orbit and our periapsis is well within the atmosphere there's going to be a point at our periapsis that our vertical speed is going to be close to zero well under the well under the 150 meters per second there so we'll be able to get under the vertical speed requirement once we get there but in the meantime we're just going to as they say follow with style and I checked the uh, oxidizer to liquid fuel ratios and they were horrible because I didn't account for how much more uh, liquid fuel those Panther engines actually use up. They're a lot less efficient than the Weasleys, but a lot more powerful. We actually had enough orbital energy stored in our orbit there to reach nearly 3,000 meters per second and just a kick of the swivel engine was enough to get us to Mach 9. And we had to hold that for three seconds, nearly burning up and blazing through the mid-atmosphere of Kerbin. And we're still in orbit, and <laughs> this was extremely, extremely spicy, as you can tell. Just heat bars all over everything, warning us that everything was about to explode. So I really hope that they don't try to push the next contract to something even crazier than this. That's at least what I was hoping at the time. So we're going to try to land somewhere at any airport I can get to, basically. Uh, we ba have barely any fuel left, so we're just going to use aero braking over and over again to slow ourselves down. Initially, I was going to land at this uh, random runway that I didn't even recognize. But we blazed right past that. I mean, after all, we have an absolute ton of kinetic energy. And it's going to take a while to bleed all of that off, even with our brake zone. And the atmosphere up here is just not thick enough to do that. But we did lower our orbit down to nearly a suborbital trajectory. Well, we've been suborbital technically this entire time, but nearly down to the KSC. So I decided that we should just land at the KSC and try to 
get it on that. And it was pretty difficult to uh, maneuver this thing around and try to use the minimal amount of uh, aerodynamic uh, uh, control that we had to try to aim at the KSC. We actually ran out of battery at one point too, so it was solely operating on going so fast in the upper atmosphere that it actually did have some aerodynamic control. So we managed to line it up with the runway, sort of, kind of, using that nice uh, waypoint there, uh, thanks to the, I believe, the waypoint manager mod is what adds those. And we start trying to brake to get rid of some of that speed because we are still blazing. But every time we would turn the brakes on, we would start kind of fishtailing. Something to do with the design of the, those brakes where one goes uh, in, one goes out, caused us to kind of like fishtail like that. I did not like that. It's very sketchy. That weird yaw oscillation is not, is, that is not my vibe. So <laughs> we're definitely going to have to fix that somewhere down the line if we keep using this SSTO and figure out what's causing it. Let me go back to the classic uh, split uh, break ones that we were doing on the last two planes. But we try to get it lined up here the best that we can. Uh, my apologies for the approach being of the night time. I had to take what I could get. I love that the uh, cockpit, it was still so hot almost to the runway that it was glowing and it still has the uh, overheat bar on it there. And the ground literally kind of snuck up on me here. I had no idea that we were going to land at that exact moment. I think I had my like uh, dogfight camera that I used to land a little bit aimed down or something. Uh, but it came to a great stop. Uh, we came in at a very low speed, so the brakes were able to take over just fine. And there is a plane that just went over Mach 9 by itself. That is pretty impressive. And we got a ton of science out of it. Where we went to high carbon orbit, we actually got even more science in over top of the contract that we got. We also got a ton of money, and we're going to go ahead and upgrade most of our facilities at the KSC. And we're going to go ahead and buy the next science node. It is always advisable to buy the stuff with science parts in it in KSP career mode. And over in mission control, someone has lost their absolute mind. Mock 12? Well, I guess the next episode is going to be even spicier than this one. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching, though. It's actually my birthday today, so I'm going to get out of here. Smoonie Chad, out.